Hi, this is Dr. Hay. We're going to talk about the relationship between electric force and electric field. Let's say you have a bunch of source charges that are creating an electric field. So here's uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, etc., and you can have uh, many more forces here. We're just going to stop at three. Um, in this field, in, the way to envision an electric field is to uh, place a, what we call a test charge. So we're going to put this test charge here, and we're going to call this test charge Q0, charge Q0. Now we know that Coulomb's law acts between two charges, and we're going to draw it as the force from Q1 on Q Q0. In other words, what does Q0 or Q0 feel due to the presence of Q1? And Q2 and Q3, oops, I think I should all be pointing towards Q0, and any other forces uh, from charges that might be in this source charges, field of source charges as well. So we know that electric force follows the law, or force follows the law of superposition. And that means that the force on this charge Q0, or this test charge, these are source charges and this is a test charge, is equal to the sum of all of the forces added together. So force, and it's a vector, and it follows the law of superposition, is equal to F uh, of the, you know, the first charge plus the second one plus the third one, etc. And these are all vectors added together, plus however many charges we have. And that's going to be equal to, according to Coulomb's law, the Coulomb's constant will exist in each one of these, um, each one of these terms. And the forces look like this. And we've looked at the form of this Coulomb's law as uh, Q1, Q0. So each of them will contain the test charge value, Q1, Q0. Is, Q0 is the test charge, and the source charge value. Now they're each going to be over, this is a 10, this is 1, 0, the distance between Q1 and Q0, this is R1, 0, that squared, and we know this is a um, direction vector, plus, and the, all the other ones are going to look the same, Q0, and I've already factored out k. Each of them has k in it. And we could just continue on. So notice that q0 is in each of these terms, so I'm going to factor out q0. We're going to get something that looks like q0, k, with uh, terms here, Q1, and now we've got something that looks a little bit more like the electric field. The electric field is really everything except the test charge. So here's the electric field, electric field vector E, such that F is equal to the test charge value Q0 times the electric field E. Both of them are vectors. So notice that the electric field E does not depend on the value of the test charge Q0. It contains only the values of the source charges. So in essence, this field exists whether you put a test charge here or not. And an electric field, uh, a nice, um, Similarity between gravity and electric electricity is that an electric field is like a gravitational field in that it's a good way to describe the force that um, that can connect across empty space between a source of electricity or gravity and something that might be placed in that uh, gravitational field or electric field in this case. Think of electric field as a modification of the physical space around source particles. And that's the relationship between F and E.